What I would like you to do is take a minute and try this chi-square distribution question on your own, read through it, try it, and then when you're ready to see the solution, go ahead and hit play. Hit pause as you're working through the question. Okay, the AP statistic exam was first administered in May of 1997. Students' papers are graded on a scale of 1 to 5, with 5 being the highest score. Over 7,600 students took the exam in the first year, and the distribution is as follows on the left. So this right here is the distribution in 1997. So 18.1% got a 1, 19.8% got a 2, 24.8% percent got a three. A sample of students who took the exam had the following distribution of grades. So this right here is a group of students that took it later on, okay? And this is the number of students that got a one, number of students that got a two, number of students that got a three. Determine if the distribution of scores for this particular sample is significantly different from the distribution of scores for all students who took the inaugural exam. So let's go ahead and see how you did on this question. All right, the first thing that you're always going to want to do before you even start working through the question is to find the expected counts. Because remember, your chi-square goodness of fit test is to see, hey, does my observed counts fit my expected counts? So what we did in order to find the expected counts is number one, you had a total of 535. So at the end of your table, always find the total number of students that you have. To get your expected counts, we're gonna take the percentage that we had from the initial testing and multiply that by 535. So here, for example, the 98.84, that came from 535 times 0.181. The 105.93 came from 535 times what was the percentage of two was 0.198. Okay, and then we did that for the rest of the scores. So now we see our expected counts of how many students should have gotten a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five, if the distributions matched. Make sure that you're showing them and make sure that you do not round. It's very important that you leave it as decimals because once you add these up, they should also give you 535. And we're doing the expected counts to make sure that they're all larger than five. All right, so let's go ahead and run our test now that we've done our expected counts. We're gonna do our state portion first. Notice we're stating we're using a chi-square goodness of fit test, and we wanna include that it's a goodness of fit test because later on we'll have different types of tests. To see if the distribution of scores for this sample is significantly different from the distribution of scores for all students who took the initial exam. Okay, what's our plan? Our plan is stating that we're going to use a chi-square goodness of test if the conditions are met. So let's do our conditions. These are all the same that we've done before. Simple random sample of students. Independence, there's more than, now notice here, okay, we did actually have a number to compare it to. 10 times 535 is 5,350, which is less than 7,600 that took the test. And then remember, we don't have a normal condition, we just have a large counts condition. And from our previous page, all expected counts were at least five. We can proceed from there. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at our null and alternative. Okay. First, our null, remember, is always going to be assuming that the distributions are the same. So we're assuming that the distribution of this sample is the same as the score of the distribution of the inaugural exam. So the two distributions are the same. The alternative is always going to be that the distribution of this sample is different from the score distribution. And it doesn't mean that all of them are different, it just could mean that one of the counts is different. Okay, now the do portion is easier than what we've done in the past. So the first thing you wanna make sure you do is state your degrees of freedom. It's always the number of categories minus one. Okay, then you're gonna find your chi-square statistics and your p-value. But keep in mind your chi-square statistic, you're gonna get all of that from your graphing calculator. So remember, you're going to go with your graphing calculator, you're going to go to stat, and then you're going to go over to test. So I, or sorry, put your data into list one, put that your, your observed, your data into list two, that's your expected. And then you're gonna go to stat 
and you're going to go over to tests and then you're going to go to chi-square goodness of fit test and that's going to give you your p-value your chi-square statistic everything you do not need to work for it however what you will need to show for your work is two plugins i don't care which two they are they can be the first two the last two whatever but always remember it's your observed minus your expected squared all divided by your expected value so that's why you want to have those expected values there very easy for you to see okay and then notice here my chi-square statistic is 162.9 i got that from the graphing calculator okay so now let's make our conclusion first make sure you find your p-value and make sure you state your probability statement so we want to state that the probability that chi squared is greater than that number from the previous page of 162.9 so don't forget to include that okay and that p-value from your graphing calculator is about zero so what does our conclusion look like because the p-value is zero which is less than our alpha of 0 0.05 and even if it's not given that's the one that we always assume to be true we reject the null so there's sufficient evidence now take a look to show that the distribution of scores of the original students is different from those that took the initial exam. Now notice your p-value, you have to state the null here. If there was no difference, then the probability of getting a statistic as extreme as ours is zero. This is statistically significant at the 0 0.05 level. Okay, now take a look at the conclusion that's highlighted in red, and this is different than what we worked on before. It's based on the null that we said the distributions were the same. Okay, now remember, if we get a result that's statistically significant, we have to do a follow-up analysis, okay? Now, a follow-up analysis says which score is statistically significantly different. So which components contribute the most to that chi-square statistic? So which one says, hey, the students did differently now than they did on the initial exam? So let's take a look at our observed versus our expected values and see which one is the highest or the lowest, okay? So let's go back to that slide and just take a look. Okay, so if we take a look here, we're going to see which ones are significantly different. So let's take a look at this one right here. So this is a pretty big difference right here. So if we take 98.84 minus 30, that tells us there's a difference of 68.84. Um, we know that this one's going to be a little bit smaller. This is only about 25. This is about 32. This is still less than 68. And then this is pretty big right here. So 167 minus 81.86. That's about an 85 um, counts different. So we would actually figure out what the chi-square, you know, contribution was to each of those. But if we take a look at these two, obviously these two are going to be the largest contributors to that chi-square statistic being so large to show that the distributions are different.